All right, guys, worst makeup that I tried in 2022. So this is not as big of a list as my favorites for 2022, thank God, <laughs> because that would be extremely sad if I had a lot of makeup I didn't like. And I have to admit that I tried a lot of good makeup, um, not that much made of favorites and not that much made a ha like bad. So I feel like there was a lot of just like middle ground makeup this year, but the ones that I really didn't like, I just really didn't like. So that is what we're gonna talk about today. Um, there is one product that I can't remember if I tried it this year, but <clears throat> if I didn't, it's so bad that I just wanna put it in this video anyways. So that's what we're gonna do. But like always with these kind of videos, comment right now what was the worst product you tried in 2022. I wanna see if we had anything similar or of course at the end of these videos, I read because I don't wanna make the mistake of buying it in 2023. So please let me know. Anyways, let's jump into it. This is my favorite brand. And you guys know I love Miss Natasha Denona, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't make a few mistakes every once in a while. And I really did not like the Hygen. So this is the skin glass. This is the serum that she released. Um, it's supposed to be like a skincare slash hydrating serum. You're supposed to put it underneath makeup. It gives you that glass-like look. I'm gonna say like, the, like, yeah, a few of the claims are true. So if you put this on, you're gonna look like the Tin Man on its own. Like you literally look like you're like, like a light bulb. And then of course you put the makeup over top and it does look great, like it looks good. Here's my issue with this is like Charlotte Tilbury's version, like the beautiful, um, the Charlotte Tilbury's um, Flawless Filter. When you put that on, I feel like you could wear it out without having to manipulate it too much. Like I don't have to put foundation on top of it. I've done it before that I just put a little bit of beautiful skin on and I'll put a concealer and it looks good because it has a skin tone to it. Like, I don't know, it's just a little different. This high glass gen, high gen thing, um, it does kind of give you like this Tin Man look and it's like, I can't wear it on its own. Um, I know she said too that you could wear it like skincare at night. I don't think I would want for anybody to see me at night looking like a glass bulb, glass bulb, a light bulb either. It's just so vibrant, you know? So in my opinion, it's just like one of those things that you put underneath foundation when you really want to look radiant and it works for that. It's just not my favorite at all. So I don't really love this product. I also had an instance that I broke out pretty bad in the summer. And I'm not saying it was this product, but I am saying that I had just tried this product right around the time that the breakouts happened. So I don't know, I just, I feel like there's multiple reasons while I'm kind of upset with this. So I'm not sure, I really don't like it though. <laughs> it looks really pretty in my background though. So I have left it as a display, but I don't really use it very often at all. Um, the other product that I really don't like, and I really wanted to like this, is from Rare Beauty. I love a lot of Rare Beauty's products, but this one just did not, it just didn't do it for me. This is the Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer. I love the design, that it doesn't roll off your table, the way that they did this edge. It's also easy to hold. Like, I love so many things about Rare Beauty's designs and their products, and I love that everything is supposed to be more natural makeup, and everything is so great, except when a product just doesn't work for my skin. This doesn't work for my skin. It's a little too dry. If you tried this, did you feel like it was dry too? But like on me, it's too dry. Like I put it on and I feel like I, I feel crepey with it, you know? So it's just, it just didn't work. It has SPF of 20 in it, which is great, but I can't get this stuff to work for me. And I feel like with tinted moisturizers, you're not supposed to try to make them work. That's why they're a tinted moisturizer. You're just supposed to like throw it on and you're supposed to look great. That's kind of what I like about the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I know I could just throw that in a few areas, blend it out and put on some concealer and my skin's gonna look pretty damn good. With this, being that it's a tinted moisturizer, I just wanna throw it on my face, like throw it on and just go with my day. Like I don't wanna have to think. If I wanted to think, I would go for a foundation or I would go for my beautiful skin foundation, have to mix in a moisturizer, do all of that stuff. But for this, I don't want that to happen. So I'm not very happy with that one. I don't like it. I really wanted to like this. So this is the Wild Greens from Urban Decay. I don't think that the quality of this palette is bad. It's not a bad palette. It's just, I can't get any pretty looks out of this. Oh God, I forgot that this one's broken. I can't get 
really pretty looks out of this. I've tried fuzz just cracked on me. I tried salvaging it. It didn't work out. So we just dumped her. Um, I feel like every time I have tried, it's just never been a look that I love. And I've tried multiple times. I've just, I've just really been giving this a go and it just doesn't work out. If you bought this, do you feel the same? I feel like the greens were just a little bit too like greeny green like ick green they weren't really like my, my sagey greens they weren't really like a dark you know hunter-ish there's like one here but like all the rest of them are like ugh, greens you know and then i just couldn't get this to work i i didn't like it this is the one that i don't know if i tried this year but i don't think it was that long ago and i can't remember if i put this last year in my regrets or whatever Makeup by Mario has these blushes, and I, I, like I said, I can't remember if he released them this year or not, but if he didn't, then I still want to tell you how horrible they are. I don't like this. Like, I just don't like it. I have tried to make this blush work for me, and for some reason, it just never does what I want it to do. And then also, I just don't get this applicator. It comes with, like, this stamp applicator, and I'm like, who wants to stamp a blush in place? Like, and even if you try, like if you try using this to blend your blush out, you are going to lose all your foundation because it's so dense and hard. This was just not, I don't get this. And I have seen the videos of how to apply it. It does not work. Like for me, that is fantastic, but it doesn't work for me. It just doesn't work for me. I can't get this to look good. So I'm not a fan. LYS. You guys know how much I love LYS. LYS is a great brand. I love their foundation. It's still one of my top foundations. So when I heard that they were coming out with the Triple Fix Concealer, I was like, yes, that's gonna match my foundation. It's gonna be the best. I don't really like it, okay? So this is not the best concealer for my skin. It's just way too dry. It doesn't do what I wanted it to do. So I'm actually kind of upset. I really wanted this to be great and it ended up not being as good as I thought. So this was one that I just, I can't get it to work. It gets crepey, it looks heavy, it gets dry. <sighs> this one I feel like I'm gonna be hard on it just because I spend so much damn money. And when you spend a lot of money, even if something is not bad, it's still bad if you don't like it. Moonlit Seduction. Guys, I think that this is the most boring Pat McGrath palette she has ever launched. And I don't mean like you can't have boring colors because of course I love boring colors. I think I use a lot of boring colors. I don't think my eyes are ever anything that people are like, wow, you like, you love color or you're not boring. Like I like boring colors, but this one, it just, it's just too many repetitive colors. I'll tell you why. Yes, does it look pretty? Sure. All of these glitters, except for like the pinky tone ones, all of these glitters up here on the lid, they almost all look exactly the same. So I almost feel like I bought a lot of glitter, which I hardly ever wear glitter, in all the same tone, which is not what I wanna do when I buy a Pat McGrath, you know? So I feel like these two, yes, one's gold and one's like white. We got two different ones there, but as everything else goes down the list and you start putting them on your eyes, you start going, well, did I just buy a repetitive palette? In the pan, does not look, on the eye, is screaming a different story. Then the two, the mattes that she gave us, we went back to the pinks. I literally create all pink looks when I use this. The only way not to is just sticking to this one brown. Otherwise, we go pink again, which I'm so tired of seeing pink from Pat McGrath because I own so many of her palettes and I think I have every array of pink in the world. And Pat McGrath is such a genius with her creative process that I just don't understand this palette. Like I just kind of feel like this was, it just, it's pretty. It's just, I feel like maybe five of the colors could have been here and the other five should have been something more and it was not. It was almost like recycled in my opinion. So I'm not 100% sold on this palette. I feel like for the price tag, I want more. I want luxury. I want creativity. I want something different. I don't want something that feels like it's been done in every other palette and maybe it's like recycled colors, just name changes. I want creativity and something different. So that's why that one got knocked down for me because if it was any other brand, it probably would not be in like the worst, but because it's Pat McGrath, I, I'm, I'm a little upset. <laughs>
<laughs> but anyway, so those were the worst products that I tried in 2022. I believe that's it. I kind of went through a list of everything I tried and tried to see if I was missing anything, but I think those were the worst ones. Obviously, you guys watch my videos, so if you know that I didn't mention something that you know I hate, leave it down below. But anyways, that is my worst products of 2022. Leave me your worst products. I want to know right now, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>